Welcome to Crimson Guitars. This is the Saturday unboxing video. It's a series where every single Saturday I am going to uh, either unbox a new product or something, uh, or have a look at uh, a new tool or a review a tool or a process or something like that, and uh, give you guys something to watch on the weekends. Now, I have been very, very excited about this one uh, for um, basically, a friend of ours has decided to send us a lot of wood um, from Australia. Now, I haven't been able to play with much um, truly exotic timber. You know, the, the boring exotics, yes, we get those, and I can pick those up from a timber yard half an hour away from my house. You know, it's, it's not difficult. But uh, Australia, New Zealand, um, and the, the even darker corners of the earth. That sounds negative. Um, I didn't mean it to be. They have some truly interesting timbers that of course can be used for guitar building and uh, we, have, we have a box full here. Now Andrew, thank you very much. Um, if you know Andrew Clark, uh, thank him for me. Now Basically, I'm going to open this box. I can't wait any longer. Now, this is the boring bit, really. Uh, now, the funny thing is, this is a, a gift. And uh, sadly, the English uh, customs and excise people decided that uh, uh, that wasn't a good idea. I've just sharpened. In fact, I'm going to have... Uh, the next unboxing video is not going to be an unboxing, it's going to be a look at the Ashley Isles um, chisels that I've had. This marking knife from there, in fact it's almost sacrilegious that I'm using this to open a box. Okay, so what you are wondering is Am I allowed to use woods other than maples and mahoganies and rosewoods that we always use? And I'm going to say again what I have said many, many times. Wood is wood. Almost all wood is a toned wood. And uh, yes, unless it's drastically... Um, Unless the wood is drastically, drastically soft, it will sound good. Here is his uh, screaming Andrew Clark at Screaming Eagle Guitars. So check out his website, uh, screamingeagle.com.au. And uh, thank you very, very much. In fact, that is an awesome logo. Uh, that's a really, really awesome logo. There we go. Okay. Now let us very well packed. I I almost want to open this as slowly as possible because I'm just just love wood. So And it's written on it as well. Oh, Banksia. Shrinkish, not reported, figure, medullary ray. This is similar to uh, English lace wood, which has got that same sort of uh, medullary ray thing. Essentially, this is when the tree. Um, is growing up, the center of the tree basically dies. And for most trees, the only life that you've got is in the outer layers where the, uh, the food and the water goes up and down. But in some species like this, uh, Banksia, these spots are bits where there's still food transporting into the middle of the tree. And uh, it gives a rather interesting figure, like lacewood. 
Oh, the smell. Okay, now here is a warning. He says, important, Australian timbers with fiddleback type figure after resawing is best to thickness via a drum sander to avoid heart breaking tear out. I am, <laughs> look at this. This is almost as well packed as, this is as well packed as our tools when they go out. So the last one was Banksia. This is something else I've never seen before. Oh, and I've, I've lost myself now. Oh, Sassafras. This is from Tasmania. A black heart figure. Come on. So, Sassafras. What you can't see, by definition, is the smell. And uh, this is really rather awesome. So that, okay, we've got more packaging. I need to sort that out, there we go. My bench isn't big enough for this. Next up, this, wow. This is flamed myrtle beach. Now the whole reason that Andrew sent this to me is so that I would make a video and uh, one, just fall over in lust, but to, to start promoting Australian woods because I, this, this is, this is stunning, and there is absolutely no reason why feeling this, yes, it's the Janker, 700 kilograms per meter cube is, is the weight. Th this feels like a, a maple. It, it feels like something, it's, it's lovely. And there's no reason why this can't be used to build guitars. Um, not least the fact that it's just beautiful. Yes, if, if everybody used little-known woods, then the, the more popular ones would uh, have less issues, like the whole problem we've got with, um, with ebony being poached at the moment. Well, every time I unpack one of these things, I... Uh, I get a, a whiff of the scent, of the deliciousness. Well, that's interesting. I've not seen figure like that before. That's um, uh, of course uh, mountain ash from Tasmania. Sort of a wave fiddleback. That is. Wow, this is a different color to the ash that we've got drastically. And uh, obviously got very interesting figuring in there. And resin pockets. That's all very well dry. Oh, I suspect. <laughs> yeah, my big problem is I'm, I'm trying to talk to you, but I'm also thinking, oh, I could do this for that and use so many different guitars to build. I'm going to be looking at this wood for years. Where's your writing? Blackwood? Acacia. Again from Tasmania. My goodness, he says the figuring on this is called Maiden's Tears. I like that. <laughs> Isn't it funny how scent really makes a difference to what you think of something? I'm, I'm, my, my brain is trying to um, 
classify the wood by what it smells like in comparison to woods, other woods that I've got. This one, well, I've got some oil, here we go, is a uh, prototype um, oil that we're having developed for uh, basically to take over from teak oil, uh, true oil, sorry. I need some tissue. I had to walk rather far away to get some uh, tissue. Oh, look at that. There we go. Now we can see the maiden's tears. Ha! Look at that. Wow. All right, okay. These are fairly chunky. These are 10 mil thick, I'd say, for the most part. And he said there's a couple of blanks. Oh, there's, yeah. There's a couple of blanks in the bottom that also need resawing, but uh, we're still going. We don't have this much. Wow. Okay, so this is another example of that acacia. Um, acacia melanoxylon, uh, which is called blackwood and is not black. Um, 640 kilograms per meter cubed. It's fairly, fairly, fairly lightweight. It, it feels almost like um, mahogany, really. And this has got... Oh, look at that. I want to get my uh, I want to get my oil out again. I'm just going to spread a little water on here so you can see the see the figure. So this is the black wood. Now the beautiful thing about uh, dried wood is uh, if you uh, if you dampen it down, you see that fine fine figuring. It uh, the water only penetrates to the uh, top layer and uh, the internal stays nice and dry. That is stunning. Uh, oh, Christmas. I, wow. Now this is a more traditional flame. So this is another piece of of the black wood with yet another type of uh, type of figuring. I love these inclusions that we've got here. Just wood is oh, look at that. So it looks like Andrew's got lots of this uh, black wood floating around or is a fan of it, and uh, I must say I completely understand why. Victorian Sealac. So if you get anything from this, from watching this video, apart from jealousy, <laughs> okay, here's a blank that needs resawing. Um, go and research Australian woods. Okay, this is another piece of that mountain ash. This feels, this is strange. This, you can see the figuring, I think. And this actually feels a little bit like, I want to say, um, it's, got a, it's got a strange pore structure. Wow. Uh, almost like gelatin or, I don't know, I don't know. Ignore me. So that's mountain ash. Can you see the, the flame in that? Okay. And uh, this is the, the bottom of the pile. Oh, wow. 
that is properly, properly rippled mountain ash. Where's my, where's my water gun? Oh, here we go. So another example of the mountain ash, but this is absolutely fiddleback ripple. And that is, that is, this feels like, no, it's, it's analogous to, to, to normal ash, actually. Look at that figuring on that screen. Ah! Um, what is it about a ripple that just makes a wood so sexy? This is going to be amazing. It's a eucalyptus, eucalyptus regnans from Tasmania. I'm going to be researching more, more Australian woods, the Antipodes. All right, I'm going to spread these out a little bit and uh, we'll have a closer look. So here we go. First out was the lacewood-like banks here. If you ever do any wood turning, I'm sure you've seen time, spent some time with the Banksia nuts. I had no idea the wood was so gorgeous. Sassafras. That reminds me of tulip wood. I love the, uh, the hardwood sapwood uh, variation there. Now, Myrtle Beach. That sounds like somewhere in America. And this is where we start getting interesting. Eucalyptus reginus, mountain ash. Such a variation in figure between that piece and where is it? Here we go. That's another piece of the mountain ash. We can't really see. Oh, there we go. You've got to be on the move in order to see how the figuring plays in the light. And this final one, that's also mountain ash. Look at the difference in color between those two. That might have been uh, cooked a little bit, I'd say. Now this is the blackwood or acacia. I wonder if it's similar to the acacias that uh, giraffes feed from in, the, uh, in southern Africa. And that's a highly figured you can see my, my attempt at wetting it down is drying. <laughs> Basically, some stunning woods. And uh, I need to spend more time. It's almost going to be a shame putting these tops on the more traditional fair bodies and necks. I'm going to have to do some research on that. I almost don't know what to say. Um, Thank you very, very much, Andrew. Uh, look, check out his website. If you want to see how these woods are used, check out screen, screamingeagleguitars.com.au. Um, he, he has some interesting ideas uh, on electric guitar design and uh, some stunning instruments. Um, there's a, a purple one on the front page that is seared into my consciousness. Um, I really want to make a purple guitar now. Uh, but he's, he's, he uses these woods and there's even more variation just in this mountain ash. Um, I saw two or three instruments with completely different finishes, um, different figuring again on top of what we've got here. Um, I am absolutely blown away. Uh, and I now want to find out what Australian mahogany is because uh, he's, he's used that and uh, I didn't know there was such a thing. This has opened up a whole can of worms, and I have a slight problem. I've got a, a tool addiction, I have a, a timber addiction, and uh, I'm afraid I'm going to have to die alone and penniless because of these two problems. Uh, but, uh, wow. Uh, yeah, well, the mountain ash, this, this last piece here, is particularly traditionally beautiful. And then you go through to the banks here and this is this, this just 
just a, I'm, I am effusing, effulgent, verbose, talking too much and very excited about what I'm going to plan to do with all of this wood. Um, so that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you are as inspired as, uh, uh, as I am now. Check out um, Australian hardwoods. I'm not sure who the suppliers are, but um, obviously just Google away. Check out screamingeagleguitars.com.au because uh, he's got images of finished instruments and this, all of this wood under lacquer and stains to show you what you can do. And there is no reason on this earth why we can't use anything other than maple and mahogany and the odd bit of alder or, or ash. I mean, you know, we all build guitars because we love wood. And uh, we seem to have fallen in love with two or three species and use that um, ad infinitum, doing damage to the planet and all of that jazz. Whereas we could support you know, smaller countries, smaller economies, smaller um, suppliers of specialist timbers and use something that nobody in your market, if you're in the, in the UK or the States or, uh, or Canada, you, you know, has ever seen. And uh, I'm, I am truly, truly excited and, and immensely grateful. Um, have an excellent day. Thank you very much. We'll be back next Saturday with uh, a look at the Ashley Isles chisels and uh, various tools that I've got from them that I've been using for the last year. And uh, in between then and now, various podcasts and things coming live as well. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, check out our website as well, crimsonguitars.com. Goodbye. <laughs>